Welcome back, everyone. This is Sims Complete. Phil Sims just adjusted his sunglasses there for the 80th million time. And Reading uh, glasses, sunglasses. Yeah. What the hell are you looking at? Uh, I know. I'm just busting your chops. But hey, oh. I'm your host, Matt Sims. That's my other host, Phil Sims. And we are back with more QB breakdowns here today. And right now we are getting to numero uno, Caleb Williams. Right. USC quarterback. Listed 6'1", 215 pounds, a junior coming out this year. And uh, Caleb Williams started his career at Oklahoma. Did a lot of great things there uh, as the as the quarterback there. Transfers over to USC. Did some more amazing things that, you know, we really don't see that often at the college level, at the quarterback position. And uh, this is going to be a fun one, Big Phil. What would you think of Caleb Williams when you are watching him on film? Oh, well, I wasn't disappointed. I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's unbelievable. You know, I got a chance to watch him on TV this year, even though they played out West. And the games I saw, it's like, wow, he just makes a lot of unbelievable plays. Um, look, he can do all the, the standard stuff. Uh, you know, one, he can throw the ball from sideline to sideline any way you want it. Sidearm, overhand, running, uh, with power, with touch. Uh, he he really has it all. He is what I would call, and you and I talk about this all the time. He definitely has a strong arm, and he so he's a thrower. He can make special throws, and he does it every single game. But yeah. he's also a passer where when it's needed, he has to touch. He's able to throw over one defender in front of another one to give his guy a chance to catch the ball, and that's a thumbnail sketch. And let me just say this. You know, I watch a lot of TV, and it's not a knock against anybody, but Kayla Williams is going to be the first pick. It's not going to be Jaden Daniels. And, I, you know, I'm not going to get into saying negative things about Jaden, but his it's not C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud, what, man? He had one of the most flexible arms you'll ever see, and that's why he has all that power, so that separates him. But Kayla Williams, this is truly a special you're, talent. You're and you were but, saying CJ Stroud in comparison to Jaden Daniels. Yeah, right. That's arm what I'm flexibility. To say. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. CJ's, he's got a catapult. It's here and it just boom. And yeah. you, you can't see it with the naked eye. You got to slow it down. Uh, but Caleb Williams has a special arm. Uh, he, he can do all the things we've already talked about in other quarterbacks. He yeah. can throw it with his hand. Uh, he can have people all around him. He can flick it. He can do whatever you need to get the football down the field to the open guy. Yeah, I remember earlier this year, uh, you know, obviously during the college football season, just watching some of the games, right, participating too with some of the things that I did with ESPN. And uh, I really, you know, started to hear that chatter. Drake's the better prospect for the NFL, right? All that. Right. And there started to be that kind of that flip-flop of like, well, it was Caleb one, Drake's two, and then it was Drake one, Caleb's two. And, you know, after watching the film again and going through some of the stuff that I had seen, Caleb Williams is the best quarterback in this year's draft. It's not yes. even close. It really isn't. It's not even close. Caleb Williams is the most ready day one guy out of the entire group. Now, is he a finished product? You know, no, it, no he's not. None of them are, right? But he is born to play the quarterback position. He has the ability to do everything that you want the quarterback to be able to do. As far as moving in the pocket, creating plays, right, making great throws into tight coverage, movement, running for yards too. This kid has it all, and I think he really is one of the best prospects that have been around for for a long time. When I see his highlights, it's it's special. It is. Yeah. There's nothing ordinary about it. Yeah, there's tons of. Well, tell me this. So you were sitting in the stands one night, high school football up at Don right. Bosco, and they were playing Gonzaga. Right? Yeah, or Gonzaga, right. however you say it. He and Caleb Williams was the quarterback. And you came home and you said, Hey, Dad, I watched this you know, wrong. And I said, Oh, really? Yeah, uh, is he really? He goes, No, he was really good. In fact, I went down on the field just to say hi to him. I did. I <laughs> yeah. did. No, I, I I saw him against uh, my my alma mater, Don Bosco, was playing against him, his school at Gonzaga there in Maryland. Right. And uh our defense, Bosco was doing a great job, you know, containing him. It was a tough game. But in the fourth quarter, I saw this dude throw a 20-yard in cut uh, in high school on the opposite hash, uh, about five feet off the ground, through three different defenders on a line, right on target, 
scramble, you know, do one of his Caleb Williams 360 spins, oh, run yeah. for a first down. And uh, I said, you know, I said, son of a bitch, this kid is uh, no doubt a Division One quarterback. And uh, I really went over there, too, just to, like, kind of do Size. the old evaluation thing. Oh, sure, you know? size him up, yeah. And, man, when I went over there, I was like, yep. I was like, dude's dude's Division One quarterback. Now, at the time when I saw him, he was probably only about, like, six foot. But – he was strong, strong yeah. hands, you know, densely built. And I was like, man, this dude's going to be a problem at the college level. And uh, it really was an, an enjoyable thing to see well, him at that level, too. And now, obviously, where he is today. You said to me, he's going, he committed to Oklahoma. Spencer Rattler better get ready to move. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, know. Spencer I did. Yeah. I did. It's not, Spencer, nothing yeah. against Spencer Rattler. He's got, we're going to talk Spencer. about him down the road because he's done yeah. well, too. No, yeah, you're but right. Caleb Absolutely. Williams. He's a he's a big guy at six yeah. one. He's a big guy, big shoulder. I met him in CBS when he won the Heisman Trophy uh, his junior year or his second year in college football, and that was the first thing that hit me. He might not be that tall, but he's big, long arms, big hands, all that stuff. I will say this: for all the talent that he has, I'm just going to give one negative. It, it will be, and it might take a year. It's going to be adjustment for him playing the NFL. Yeah, but he's athletically, you know, he's the best guy on the field and all through co- high school and college. Well, there won't be the point in the pros. He won't be physically the best guy. The the runners, the guys going after him, everything is just going to be faster and tougher, as you know. So I don't expect him to, let's say he goes to Chicago Bears. I don't expect him to start out and just be on fire. That's right. for sure. Right. So that uh, to me, that'll be his biggest adjustment as I look at him, because the other stuff's going to come. My God, I, I I couldn't even write notes when I watched him because I was just kept going. Well, that was a good play. Let me write. Oh, that was really good. You know, I, I did that so many times. Right. Watching him, some of the throws that were just fantastic. Yeah, they were. And, and I mean, as far as his mobility goes, I, I was extremely impressed with how well he moves in the pocket. Of course. His ability to adjust, change angles, uh, you know, like I said, to do his 360s. There's multiple times in college. Now, this is something that I wouldn't promote at the NFL level, but there's multiple times in college where he literally turns and runs the opposite way to get out of traffic. He's looking at the opposite end zone and still is able to get his head around, adjust, throw on the run or reset, and then throw again down the field. His pocket movement like that, Reminded me a little bit of young Russell Wilson with the Seattle Seahawks. You know, yeah, that's a good one. young young Russell used to like reverse field twice and then throw that 50-50 ball down the field, you know, and it kind of reminds me of that, but it's it's even better. It's even it's even more impressive with his right. ability to do that because he has a stronger arm, he has a more flexible arm, and he can throw from you know more uh difficult positions more consistently. So that was one thing that I think that really you know, to me was like a wow moment watching his film. Yeah. Well, you know, to you saying all those things, it's all true. Just some things I put hearts beside things I like about quarterbacks <laughs> or whatever I'm doing. And damn, he's got a lot of hearts on this paper. <laughs> so, you know, it's, uh, but you know, the, the, the one thing that another negative, I, I would say there are not a lot of times, but a, I'm going to say four or five a game where he gives up on the pocket too quick. Right. Because he has the ability to move, sometimes he overuses it. Instead of staying with the read, it's going to be wide open for you. You're going to throw it in time and stuff like that. So that yeah. that's one. But the hands, uh, the, the other thing is he spins the ball great. You said it. The ball spins. It's always a spiral, it seems like. And he's yeah. got the power to make it easy to catch. Has all the arm angles. The other thing, to move like he does, that means his feet. He you know, kind of stays on his feet. The ball's on his feet. So he's always able to react. He doesn't get stuck flat footed right. trying to throw the ball. Uh, he can launch it. I mean, gosh, uh, how many throws did you see where he threw it over 60 yards and you couldn't even see it in the screen? It went out of the screen. He threw it so high. Yeah. Well, that, that's pretty cool. And, but uh, yeah. And then he makes flat footed throws where he gets stuck and he just has to stand there. And now he's just got to do it with all of his body and arm. He does that great too. So man, Matt, if he's not the first pick, boy, that, that'll be something you, as a football team, you just got to sit there and hope and pray that he, he doesn't turn out to be who a lot of people 
think he is going to be in the NFL. Now you're the the Chicago Bears. You're you're picking Caleb Williams. Oh, you know, yes. I'm gonna as soon as they say the ninth, uh, 2024 draft has started, it'll be right there. <laughs> there you go. Gotcha, Commissioner. Yeah, Here we are. I'm right with you. but well, they they might not like that for the building up the TV drama. No, but oh you, no, no, you'll have they, the card in early. You're saying they're gonna turn they're gonna turn it in, and you know what is it? 15 minutes in the first round. Something like that. So what, yeah. Whatever it is, I can't think. But they're yeah. turning in the last 30 seconds. Oh, there's some mystery. Maybe it is, uh, you know, Jaden Daniels. No, it's not going to be. And, it, right. you know, if it is, a lot of people be shocked. I'll be really shocked. I like Jaden Daniels a lot. But Caleb Williams it truly is special. I hate the word generational talent. Yeah. But he's really, you know. What else can I say? Go ahead. Anything else you got about him that you want to? Yeah, mark I mean, out? I, I think what is really neat when you watch his film too is that uh, we said this too with with Michael Penix, right? His ability to just manipulate the football with his hand. There's multiple times that he drops back. He's about to pull the trigger and make a decision to something over here to his left. He recoils. And then with really out actually having to like totally reset and get his body all lined up, he can kind of just turn and just rip his arm back and throw it with just his, his arm and hand. And that to me is a, a great quality yeah. for an NFL quarterback to have that to me, other than Michael Penix, he really is the only one out of this class that seems to do that with the consistency of technique over and over, you know, a lot of those don't get away from him. So right. his accuracy when he recoils to me is, is something that, you know, as an evaluator, I love that because I could see he can look somewhere, get adjusted, get taken off that read, find something else on the opposite side of the field and still make a dynamic throw without really blinking an eye. You know what I'm doing? And it's been said, and our your brother said it, and to a degree, he, you know, trying to tamp it down a little bit. Yeah. But it's uh, if I went back and I can remember watching Patrick Mahomes at Texas Tech. Right. And now time is separated and everything has changed. But Caleb Williams watching his tapes are more impressive than the ones I saw with Patrick Mahomes. Now, wow. don't take this out of context and say, oh, Phil said that he's going to be better. No, I'm not saying that. Well, but, they will if they want to. It's okay. Well, yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, but it he... He does it, you know, the, the same way as Pat. The hand throwing, too. That's a big He can do it. Aaron Rodgers, great hand thrower. You know, get yeah. caught, can lean back and throw it underhanded 30 yards like it's something. You got any right. other ones? As I was quickly trying to think in my head, Justin oh, Herbert. Other, yeah, Herbert's very good that way. Uh, you know, uh, man, off the top of my head, uh, I think Lamar's very good at that. Lamar can definitely do it. He is absolutely like one of the better ones. Of course, Mahomes, Herbert, uh, Josh Allen at times. He doesn't quite have it naturally, I think, as Caleb does already in his right. career. So that's that's interesting. Um, you know, but what I like in that that comparison with Patrick Mahomes, you know, there was a lot of like, I feel like Patrick just kind of like, yeah, hey, what, what the F? Let me just throw it, you know? <laughs> I don't really see a ton of like reckless throws from Caleb Williams when I watch this film. Even too, when you look at his stats, I well, mean, yeah. past two years, five interceptions each season. And with the amount of throwing, I mean, 388 attempts uh, this past year, 500 attempts the year before that, you know, the dude protects the football while still playing super aggressive. And that's something that we commended Patrick Mahomes on this year during the playoffs. A lot of attempts. A lot of big time throws, tight windows, and doesn't throw it into traffic very often. You know, the one game that everyone kind of brings up is the Notre Dame game. Ooh. But, you know, that was a bad one for sure. But that's not enough for me to say, you know, I I'm I'm afraid now of this pick. Oh, li listen. Uh, well, a couple things. But one, the Notre Dame game, never did I go, it's the quarterback's fault. You know, they they're blitzing. Could we just once pick up the blitz? <laughs> and two, that which they never did. He was under constant duress. So, you know, I'm judging him. Right. I'm I've given the fault to the coaches, okay? Because <laughs> yeah. I can, there's nothing he can do. Yeah. But also the other thing is Notre Dame was all over their receivers and all over their offense. Right. I mean, they were everything. And it's you know, I didn't look at USC's offense and think it was complicated 
and really big. You know, they they had some principles in there I like, but more and more more than anything, it, I, I don't mean this as a, as a bad, but it's a college offense. Okay, right. it, it doesn't have enough of the pro stuff in it for me, but they did a, a really good job with it anyway. Yeah, I mean, there wasn't a ton of answers for for different things that they saw no. throughout the year. There wasn't a lot of adjustments. There it wasn't a lot on the quarterback's plate either. So that will be an adjustment for Caleb Williams and his development too with just asking and demanding more of him at the position. You know, we've seen that again from, you know, guys like Patrick Lamar Josh Allen taking more of a command in the offense, being more vocal, changing the protections, making plays and adjustments on the fly. And, uh, you know, I think that will be some somewhat of an adjustment for Caleb since he will be thrusted into the starting lineup right away. You know, this is not a guy that, hey, let's sit him on the bench for a year. No, he's he's playing day one no matter what. Yeah. Well, he was sacked 83 times during his career. That's a lot. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. It, it, they'll fix that up, too. But, uh, yeah, you know, I can't wait just to tell everybody out there, when we get done with all these quarterbacks, we're going to do a little, just a few plays to show you that you can see it live, uh, what they do and why we think they're going to go in a certain round or why they're good or what maybe the trouble spots are for these guys as they go into the NFL. Yeah, definitely. We'll we'll, we'll absolutely get to more of that stuff, though, uh, in the future. You know, other thoughts on Caleb Williams as far as the film and stuff like that. Like, you think he's for sure he, – he's the number one pick. The Bears yeah. shouldn't blink an eye. They got to take him. Yeah. What other things, uh, you know, about Caleb impress you, though? No, you know, I just think that uh, the physical part of him, I love everything about that. He's mobile, uh, can change directions. Awesome. We've talked about all of his throws. He's got a really – He's got the combination, man. He's got yeah. the combo. He's got the combo of the power and the finesse. So yeah. he's a that's the old thrower passer. Right. And he definitely has both of those. And hey, look, I think he's got a I, I haven't heard him talk a whole lot, but the way he plays and everything, he's got to have a good personality. So a lot of players are going to gravitate around him and he has a chance to be a leader and influence the football team because of his talent. So no doubt. And I mean, hey, the NFL is a business and the Bears draft Caleb Williams and there's going to be a lot of excitement about that business. You know, business will be booming for sure if <laughs> Caleb Williams is the quarterback because, uh, you know, hey, I'm tuning in to the Bears to check it out too, you know, oh. if they draft him. So, uh, but we'll see though what that means though for Justin Fields, you know, and, and his future if you were in, in this situation, the Bears GM, where he goes, what they get for him in return to obviously help Caleb Williams. And also, you know, now he's on a rookie deal. So maybe they are a little bit more aggressive in free agency and surrounding him with some more veteran talent around the NFL uh, this offseason. A lot of good receivers and defensive players in the free agency this season. So we'll we'll see kind of where the Bears put their focus. OK, well, here we go. Before we stop this. Tell yeah. me where Justin Fields is going. What team? Go. Ooh, I would uh I would like to see him with the Atlanta Falcons. Me too. Yeah. I would like that. That's definitely high on my list for sure. Okay. Well, that was yeah. easy. Yeah, sorry. That for, so you and me, <laughs> you and me uh, agreeing is not a common thing. So I, 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 I guess so. I guess right. so. Yeah. No, it's all uh, good. Good stuff. Yeah, good stuff. That's all we got today for Caleb Williams. Again, we will revisit all of these quarterbacks as we go through this process leading up to the draft. And then we'll discuss again, obviously, after the draft, you know, the fits and the school, uh, the teams that they end up with and whether or not we like them, whether the coaching staff will change a little bit of what they do to fit the guy that they they picked. And uh, it's going to be an exciting year for this NFL draft. But yeah, for, for me and Big Phil, there's no doubt Caleb Williams is is the number one guy in this year's draft and the Bears should not hesitate. Yeah, that and all, a lot of other quarterbacks who are going to find places in the NFL, we're going to bring them up too and talk about them. And there's, yeah. there's quite, quite a list, probably and, and at least 10 more, maybe 15. No, hey, we'll 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 get through all we'll that stuff. It. Yeah. It's a podcast, big guy. We could talk about whatever the hell we want to talk about for the whole year. So, um, you know, what's them the future? Hey, they don't care. They're just going to tune in. So, um, you know, the thing <laughs> okay. is, what what is great is that, uh, you know, just a few weeks ago, I was uh, doing an interview. And I was like, yeah, keep Justin Fields. You know, don't you know, trade away the pick, get pick, you know, pick collateral for him, all that kind of stuff. You know, surround him with talent. And then I watched the film, and I was like. Trade Justin Fields, keep Caleb Williams. Let's go. So it's just so funny how uh, you know watching film and doing this, how, how quickly your opinion can change. So I don't know if that's a hey, good sign or not. But listen, when you when you get more facts, 
your opinion should change. Okay, yeah. you gain knowledge. So, well, well I'm gonna didn't see it. Uh, you know, you changing your opinion is what you should do all the time in this business because yeah. the more information you gather, the smarter we're gonna get. At least I hope so. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, we'll that, see. We we dan- we're praying. That's for sure. Well, yeah. that was our philosophy for the yeah, day, you know. and uh, I'm your host Matt Sims with my <laughs> other host Phil Sims because he didn't like the name co-host. And that's all we got today for Sims Complete. We'll be back with more stuff here uh, real soon. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Peace.